Okay po mga kapatid, let us pray po. Amang Diyos na mga Panginoon sa lahat, maraming salamat po sa gabi nito na kami po ngayon ay muli magkakasama po Panginoong Diyos upang mag-aaral ng inyong mga salita. Niling po namin Panginoon na patnabayan niyo po kami sa aming pag-aaral. Bigyan niyo po kami ng uh, katalinuhan na nagmumula sa inyo at bukas na po sa tisipan. Upang lahat po ng aming mapapakinggan ay tumimo sa amin at amin po itong uh, lubos na maunawaan at maintindihan upang sa kalalago ng aming pananampalataya. Panginoon Diyos, siniling din po namin na gabayan niyo po ang aming uh, tagapagturo sa gabing ito. Si Brother John Pentes, bigyan niyo po siya ng katalinuhan nagmumula sa inyo upang uh, sa amin po ay mas ma, 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 mapakinggan po namin ng maigi itong mga uh, aralin po na ito na kanyang inihanda, itong uh, aklat ng Book of Revelation. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoon Diyos, na maging focus kami sa pag-aaral at ilayo niyo po kami pa sa mga distraction na maaaring uh, magbigay sa amin ng hadlang upang hindi namin mapakinggan at maintindihan ang aming mapag-aaralan. Panayon Diyos, nagpapasalamat kami sa inyong mga biyaya at nagpapasalamat kami sa inyong paggabay at muli pa ng Diyos, binabalik namin ang kapurihan at, pananam, uh, at pasasalamat sa inyong dakilang pangalan at iniling po namin na patawarin kami sa lahat ng aming mga pagkukulang at pagkakasala. Ito po amin sa madalangin sa matamis sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Okay po mga kapatid, ang asa request po na ninyo no, o nating lahat na uh, mapakinggan natin yung Book of Revelation no. Sa uh, mula kay Brother John Pentes ay siya po ay inihanda niya yung aralin no ng Book of Revelation. So tawagin na po natin si Brother John para po ibigay sa atin yung lesson ngayong gabi. Okay, magandang Magandang gabi ho sa inyong lahat. Dito madaling araw, ano? Um, anong oras ba rito? Alas 4 ng madaling araw. So, sakto dahil uh, paumaga na rin. Ako yung natutuwa dahil mayroon kayong interest na pag-aralan itong uh, revelation. Uh, unless siguro na yung sa klase, bihira ang may gustong pag-aralan itong book of revelation. Uh, napapakinggan niyo ba ako? Yes po, Brother June. Mag-on. Oh, sige, sige. Thank you. Okay, so, so if you have yung PowerPoint, um, naka-on ba yung PowerPoint natin, kapatid? Brother uh, Aris. <laughs> Ayan. So, yan po si Brother Aris po magre-ready ng ating PowerPoint. Okay. Para susunan natin yung PowerPoint, marami siya eh. Maraming pages ito. So, Mahigit 60 pages. Ang goal natin is at least uh, less than less than a minute per page. So, medyo mabilisan kaya I provided Revelation, yung PowerPoint sa inyo. intro and overview. Aha, uh -huh. yan, yan, yan. So, yan yun. Uh -huh. So, good. So, so, at least parehas tayo ng PowerPoint. So, sabihin ko na lang kung next page na tayo. Maraming salamat, Brother Aris. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for having me. At uh, higit sa lahat, maraming salamat sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at sa ating Diyos na binigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na natili tayong safe uh, throughout this uh, period ng pandemic. Na po. Ang Revelation is a book na it's an, it's an interesting uh, uh, book to study. Uh, at uh, napakahalagang pag-aralan pero kung magkami siya, nagiging source siya ng confusion at uh, minsan source din ng takot dahil sa iba-ibang interpretation ng mga, ng mga tao. So, iyon ang uh, pag-aaralan natin ngayong umaga. No? Uh, itong sa next slide natin, ang sabi niya sa Revelation 1.3, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of prophecy. Uh, this prophecy and blessed are those who hear. So, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina na It, it, maganda pag-aralan ito dahil ang sabi ng writer ni John uh, na kung sino man ang, ang makapakinig at kung sino man ang mag-aral o magbasa nitong, uh, nitong topic na nitong book na ito is blessed. Uh, yun nga lang, minsan hindi tayo nabi-blessed dahil hindi natin pinag-aaralan. So again, thank you so much for your interest in studying the book of Revelation. Um, uh, my prayer is that after na mapag-aralan ninyo itong book of Revelation, you'll be stronger in your faith. Uh, 
Mayroon tayong reading assignment. I hope na nabasa natin yung Book of Revelation in its entirety. Ang pinakamaganda rito, basahin natin yung Book of Revelation in one sitting. So, it will take you an, an hour and a half. So, I, so nung binigay ko sa inyo itong uh, assignment na ito, so, ginawa ko rin kasi mahirap naman na bibigyan ako sa inyong assignment pagkatapos uh, hindi ko susubukan. So, ginawa ko, it, it took me an hour and a half to read the entire book. Mas maganda kasi siya pag ganoon dahil um, mag, mas maroon, hindi, na, hindi especially sa Book of Revelation, hindi mo maintindihan lahat pero at least mayroon kang idea uh, doon sa kabuuan ng libro at hindi lang uh, parts by part. Uh, most of the time, ang pag-aaral natin ng Book of Revelation na hanggang chapter 3 lang eh. Di ba? After noong seven churches, wala na. At pagkamisan, pag uh, we, we, we pick uh, a verse here and there hanggang doon sa dulo, hanggang sa chapter 22. Uh, also, if you had time, sana nabasa ninyo yung Daniel and Ezekiel. Marami sa mga symbols na ginamit dito sa Book of Revelation, nagamit na, hindi sa, hindi sa bagong symbols. When it comes to the Bible, ano? So, at karamihan sa kanila nabanggit sa Daniel at sa Ezekiel. Next slide tayo. Revelation. Itong uh, word na revelation or sometimes ang tawag, especially ang translation sa Tagalog, depende sa version ng Bible, is apocalypse. Ano? Apocalypsis. Uh, yeah, yung apocalypses na yun is translation sa English ng uh, Greek word niya. At ang meaning noon, hindi yung end of times. Uh, kahit ngayon, pag tinignan mo, pag ginugol mo, sinubuhan ko i-google, ang meaning niya is end of times. Iyon yung interpretasyon. Iyon yung uh, sinasabi lang kapag, uh, yung kahulugan ng, o napapaloob na mensahe sa aklat ng Revelation. Pero yung word na apocalypses itself, ang meaning niya is uncovering. So, apo means away. Uh, para katulad ng apologetics. Di ba? So, calypsis means a hiding or veiling. So, yung apo calypsis means unhiding or unveiling. Uh, revealing uh, is another term for it. Ang aim ng study natin, specifically itong... Uh, ngayon is at yung overall na uh, meaning natin o yung overall na aim natin sa study ng Revelation is to identify rational and practical uh, way to study the book of Revelation. Kasi nga minsan napakahirap, mukhang napakahirap ng uh, pag-aralan intindihin yung book of Revelation uh, kaya ano ano siya Uh, lalong ayaw natin pag-aralan, naguguluhan tayo. At uh, especially ngayon, dahil dito sa pandemic, uh, marami sa mga tao na nakakausap mo at karamihan yung mga church goers, uh, lalo na sa mga denomination, uh, makailan lang may kausap ako and then uh, sabi niya, ito na, ito na yon ito na yung uh, sign ng end of times. Uh, yung paglalagay daw ng microchip, itong uh, uh, pandemic na ito. So, makikita mo siguro, iyon yung tinuturo sa kanila at iyon yung napag-aaralan nila sa, sa church kung saan man sila nag-a-attend. Ano? So, kaya maganda na mag, uh, mabigyan natin ng linaw sa ating pag-aaral kung ano ang kahulugan nitong mga, especially yung iba't ibang mga symbols dito sa Book of Revelation. So, to understand its message and purpose, doon sa intended recipient, ano yung purpose, ano yung meaning, ano yung lesson para doon sa intended recipient, pero at the same time, ano naman yung application na, na prince, yung, yung principles na pwede rin may apply natin sa atin sa ngayon. Pero bago natin talaga, before we deep dive doon sa book of Revelation at dito sa lesson natin uh, today, ang pag, uh, medyo we're going to step back at pag-aralan muna natin yung... yung How can we understand yung Book of Revelation? And then also later on, we'll talk about kung ano naman yung uh, ano yung uh, 
different ways of interpretation at ano yung interpretation na would fit yung book of Revelation. So now we're talking about the sa next slide, seven vital principles in understanding the book of Revelation. So seven vital principles in understanding the book of Revelation. Ang una is we need to understand yung mga key verses. Specifically, ang unang itong Revelation 1.1, ang sabi niya rito, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his bond servants the things which must soon take place and he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bond servant John. Ito yung revelation, ang sabi niya dyan sa pinakaumpisa, this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. So, at lahat itong mga verses na nakasulat dito, uh, paki-flip paki, uh, po mga uh, kapatid, hanggang doon sa, yung kabuuan, kasi medyo line by line eh. Hanggang makita natin yung last na line na uh, total of 99 verses. So, lahat itong mga verses na naka-list natin dito at marami pang iba, a total of 99 verses, uh, points back o ang reference niya is si Christ. Okay, so, yun ang isa sa mga uh, key verses o key idea na kinakailangan i- sa isip natin na itong revelation na ito is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Another principle dito sa seven principles na binanggit natin is alalahanin natin kung kanino na isulat itong aklat ng Revelation. Dito sa Revelation 1.4 ang sabi ni John, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. So ito yung recipient. Uh, para katulad ng, ng sulat niya sa mga taga-Colosa, sa mga taga-Filipos. So makikita natin doon na uh, very specific, meron siyang uh, church or in the case of Philemon, in the case of Titus or Timothy, meron siyang individual na sinusulatan. And in this case, dito sa Revelation, meron seven churches na sinusulatan si John. Now, of course, later on sa mamaya, pero mamaya ako na mabanggitin, may uh, depende sa mga nagtuturo at uh, yung interpretation nila nitong seven churches. Ano ba itong seven churches? Literal or figurative? Uh, pero dito sa... Ang gusto kong banggitin ngayon na itong seven churches na binanggit ni Apostle John, mayroong talagang itong churches dito sa mga lugar na ito. May mga churches dito sa mga lugar na ito na na mababasa tayo even sa history, sa church history at even sa secular history. No. Okay. Okay, yun. O, oh, sige. Okay, tuloy tayo. Yung seven churches na binanggit niya sa verse 4, pinangalanan niya, in-identify niya naman sa verse uh, 10 and 11. So ang sabi niya on the on the Lord's day dito by the way dito natin nakuha yung ito ang kaisa-isang verse that uh, mention yung yung phrase yung term na uh, Lord's day. So dito natin nga uh, pag gantong uh, Sunday malimit tayo mag- nagbabatian sa especially sa group chat na Happy Lord's Day Happy Lord's Day pero dito galing yan sa verse na ito. On the Lord's day I was in the spirit and I heard Behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on the scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. And there, pinangalanan niya yung seven churches. Kung nasaan, yung location, no, mga seven churches na yan. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So yun yung seven churches na sinasabi niya. Itong seven churches na ito, is a, uh, is a literal churches at yung uh, sulat niya is a circular uh, letter. A circular letter siya. Parang yung letter ng Ephesus sa kanang na isinulat sa for Ephesus sa kayo sa Colossians siguro. It's meant to be a circular letter. Ibig sabihin, 
pinaiikot doon sa iba't ibang mga churches. So ganoon din itong uh, Book of John. It's written, one letter, sinend niya, ang intended recipient, pitong churches, pitong location. So it meant to be circular. Ibig sabihin, pagkabasa ng isang church, then they're supposed to uh, take it to the next church. So kaya sinasabi nating circular uh, circular church uh, circular letter ano. Yung message niya rito uh, katulad sa 1 Peter it talks about persecution pero yung date ng 1 Peter is different from yung date ng Revelation. Ang uh, itong seven churches na ito is uh, uh, ang ano niya ang mga tao dito sa seven churches is uh, mixed. Uh, mayroong Gentiles karamihan, pero mayroon ding mga uh, Jewish. Mix ng Jewish. And uh, yung persecution in early Rome, uh, social, political, religious, ang sources ng uh, persecution nila. So kaya makita natin dito na mayroong persecution during, uh, during those times. So iyon yung kalagayan uh, nitong yung time of writing at kung sino yung mga sinusulatan ni John. Uh, yun ang sabi niya. Siya yung writer. Mamaya, we'll, we'll also have a slide about yung kung sino yung writer. But for now, ito yung map. Ito yung map ng uh, Asia Minor. Kung nakita ninyo. So Asia Minor, if you look at it, if you zoom out, is part of Turkey of uh, yung uh, current day na Turkey. So noong araw, uh, nandiyan yung Asia Minor. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamo, Thyatira. Okay, pag nakita mo si John, uh, John was writing from an island. Sa verse 9, ang sabi niya, nasa island siya o Patmos. Kaya dyan, nakita niyo yung, yung sa next slide, nakalagay, John was here. So nandiyan siya sa island ng Patmos. Not too far then, uh, part pa rin ng uh, Asia Minor, pero it's a separate, it's an island. Pagkatapos, makita mo na ang first is yung Ephesus, and then from Ephesus, pwede mo nang puntahan yung iba't ibang mga churches. Uh, way back, noong 2002 yata, I visited this place. Itong Ephesus na ito, when they built itong Ephesus, it was a port city. Uh, nakikita nyo naman dito, malapit siya sa tubig. Pero today, pag pinuntahan mo yung uh, ruins ng Ephesus, medyo malayo na yung tubig. Ang naging dahilan, rerouting siguro ng uh, irrigation, kaya medyo lumayo siya doon sa pinaka-seashore. Uh, pero Ephesus, especially during that time, is considered a port city. And then from Ephesus, we traveled yung iba't ibang mga uh, location including yung mga location ng mga wala dito wala naman dito pero today you could take yung alibawa car o kaya bus at malalapit lang tong mga lugar na ito hindi sila ganoon ka kalayuan pero during that time na iba pa ang mode of transportation it will take uh, hours or days before you get to the next place pero lahat itong seven churches na sinusulatan ni John nasa isang lugar nandito sa Asia Minor. Okay? Uh, number three, dito sa things that we have to consider in studying the book of Revelation is iyong situation. Ano ba yung sitwasyon? Ano yung nangyayari doon sa lugar sa Asia Minor during that time? So may mga verses tayo rito. Uh, Revelation 1.9, Revelation 2.9 and 10, Revelation 2.13. Kung babasahin natin, So one night, and sabi niya, I, John, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. So si John nakakulong sa island of uh, Patmos. Pero sabi niya, there is uh, tribulation. Sa 2, 9, and 10, ang sabi niya dito, I know your tribulation. So ang tribulation, hindi lang si John, kundi pati rin doon sa sinusulatan niya, doon sa seven churches. And your poverty, but you're rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not. 
but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear that you are what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. Okay. Uh, Jesus is speaking. It was uh, verses 9 and 10. And then sa 2.23, uh, 2.13, ito naman ang sabi, I know where, you're, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. So dito, makikita natin na mayroong, uh, they are suffering from persecution, tribulation. Hindi lang si John na naka-isolate na, nakakulong na sa, uh, dito sa island of Patmos. But also, itong mga Kristiyano sinusulatan niya. And uh, gaano ka-severe itong persecution? Ang sabi niya, some of you are uh, getting killed. Ano? So, so nag-umpisa na yung persecution and then it's about to get more uh, serious. Yung level ng persecution, mas lalo pang uh, titindi. So, yun yung sitwasyon. Ito yung setting dito. Kaya itong mga next slides, mayroon tayo rito some pictures uh, just to give us idea. So, yan yung island of Patmos. So, hindi siya maliit na island. Ngayon, inhabited na. During that time, hindi natin alam kung talaga this is a, a place kung saan talaga ina-isolate nila yung mga prisoner. Uh, si Jan was in prison dito sa island na ito. And Christians, sabi nga natin kanina, binasa natin kanina, uh, were being killed during that time. Ano? And then ito, may isang slide pa rito ulit. Pag tinignan mo yung uh, yung Prison system natin ngayon, um, parang matatakot ka makulong. Ano? Uh, siksikan, marumi, mainit. Um, uh, pero if you compare that to yung prison system during those times, mas mahirap. Walang mga human, room, human rights pagka prisoner ka. So ngayon, meron pang uh, human rights. So, so, pero uh, kung meron man noong araw, uh, uh, ngayon, ano uh, araw, hindi, hindi siya uh, kasing uh, humane na uh, katulad ngayon. So if you are in prison, talagang you are in prison. Uh, so many crucifixions then uh, Rome. Ang sabi, um, ang sabi sa, sa church history, there were so many persecutions during that time na yung Rome ran out of lumber. So, ganoon, karami ang mga taong pinarurusahan. Karamihan sa kanila, mga Kristiyano. Okay. Now, yung date of writing natin uh, is uh, may at least tatlong candidate. Ano? Uh, during the time of Nero, itong sa 5468 AD, And this was the time also na si Paul was in prison in Rome, uh, 60, 64, 65 AD. So si, si Nero, dahil mayroong persecution, is specifically, mayroong parang packet na persecution lang siya. Pero yung mass persecution, especially sa Rome during that time, is uh, brought about by doon, doon sa sunog na nangyari. Uh, yung sunog, may uh, allegation na si Nero talaga nagpasunog Uh, dahil uh, yung lugar na nasunog, parang gusto niyang i-remodel, gusto niyang i-renovate yung uh, city of Rome. So that's one way, pero nag-backfire. Pero noong instead na masisi siya, sinisi niya yung mga Kristiyano. So isa yun sa mga potential, sabi nila na date of writing. Ang isa is yung during yung time ni uh, Vespasian. Uh, 69, 67, 67, 69 AD. This was, itong si Vespasian din ang, uh, ang uh, emperor during yung fall ng Jerusalem ng 70 AD. Pero uh, sinasabi lang nila rito, 16, 769, ng iba na ito yung time, 
especially kung ang interpretation nila mayroong connection doon sa fall ng Jerusalem. So, it was a persecution before yung actual na fall ng Jerusalem. Pero ang mas popular at karamihan, ang, ang paniniwala nila, and uh, of course, uh, there are reasons to believe, is itong uh, 81 to 96 uh, AD, at the turn of the century, first century, ang emperor naman during that time is si Domitian. And dito kay Nero sa aking Vespasian, mayroong persecution. Pero again, yung mga isolated, mga regional packet na persecution, dito kay Domitian, ang persecution is more widespread. Wide, uh, And since we know, uh, especially coming from church history, na ito si John was the last apostle to die. And uh, he died out of old age. So he, he get to live uh, up to the end of the century. So iyan yung, uh, iyan yung uh, possible na dates of writing. Uh, sa glita, inom lang ako at uh, ubusan ako ng ano, tubig. <clears throat> another uh, principle that we have to remember, another factor, is that we, we should remember na itong book na ito, number four, next slide, is a picture book. So picture book siya. Although you're reading it, pero there's a lot of picture. Uh, there's a lot of symbols. Revelation, for example, Revelation 17, 1 and 2. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery and the inhabitant of the earth were intoxicated with wine of her adultery. So very descriptive siya. Uh, it tells you in detail kung ano yung nangyayari. If, you, if somebody is, uh, is reading the book of John, ngayon sa app natin, marami ng mga audio Bible. If you listen to it, And uh, while you're listening, you could close your eyes and you could try to picture kung ano yung, ano yung nakasulat. It has enough information para magkaroon ka ng vivid, na clear na picture sa mind mo when you're going through the book of Revelation. So chapter 1, Jesus walks among the seven lamps stand. Yun ang sabi niya. And then a lamb who was slain and is standing with seven horns and seven eyes. So many descript uh, descriptions, uh, detailed uh, description. Uh, Jesus, as chapter 6, uh, was uh, depicted as riding on a white horse. And then mayroong uh, vivid and detailed description again of yung seven bowls, bowls of wrath. Ang sabi niya sa chapter 16. Okay. And then even yung lake of fire. Talagang, yun yung description, ano? Lake of fire. So you, you could almost imagine it is a lake, and, but it's a lake of fire. Parang bunganga ng vulkan. So the, the writer, John, used a lot of pictures, colors, animals, numbers in his writing. And also, pag tinignan mo rito, balikan natin yung Revelations 1. Uh, ito ang sabi niya rito. Uh, chapter 3, uh, ito ang sabi niya. Uh, Blessed is he who reads the words and the prophecy and heed what was written. Okay. Iyon ang, iyon ang sinabi niya rito. So kaya pag binasa mo, immediately after this, makita mo na then John uh, tells us kung ano yung nakita niya. E diba dito sa verse 1, ang sabi niya, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave to show. So iyon ang ano niya, iyon ang uh, iyon kaagad ang first na word niya. And then again, you, you just read uh, the the first uh, 
a few verses ng chapter 1 and then you could see you could you could see yung uh, yung mga symbols mga pictures na ginamit ng writer and so it, it is a picture book and then ang number 5 is that it is an old testament uh, it is a bilisan ko it is an old testament book ang ibig natin sabihin yan napakaraming references sa old testament Somewhere between 75 and 80 of all the verses in the book of Revelation make, uh, makes reference to the Old Testament. So, napakarami niya. Yung temple, yung sacrificial system, sa Leviticus especially, yung 12 tribes. So, lahat ito minention sa book of Revelation. So, to understand the book of Revelation, uh, one must know to, one must have the knowledge of the Old Testament. Uh, sa klase namin sa heritage, yung Revelation is one of the... You study it sa last uh, semester mo na, no? Pero before that, um, you have to study yung book of Ezekiel and Daniel. So, ititake mo muna yung course ng Ezekiel sa Daniel bago yung Revelation. And uh, pag nag pag, uh, tinake mo na yung course ng Ezekiel sa uh, Daniel, you'll be familiar with uh, yung different na symbols, uh, yung figure of speech. So by the time you read yung Revelation, makita mo, oh, nabasa ko na to. So hindi na siya bago. Okay. Number six, Revelation is a futuristic book. Uh, one thing that you're gonna notice in the book of Revelation Itong mga verses that use the word soon or near. So, uh, starting from chapter 1 all the way to verse 22. So, makakita mo na itong pangyayaring ito is about to take place. So, yes, the book of Revelation is a futuristic book. Ibig sabihin, from the point of view of the recipient, which is the seven churches, mangyayari pa lang itong sinulat, pero not in a distant future. Dahil, doon sa word na soon. Okay? Doon sa word na soon. Malapit na. Malapit na mangyari. And itong mga bagay-bagay na ito is nangyari para may kabuluhan sa kanila doon sa recipient. Uh, of course, it has to happen during their lifetime. Okay? Because just like any other book in the New Testament, especially... Uh, it's be, they are being written to or they are yung, yung author is writing a book doon sa recipient uh, to encourage them, to warn them, to encourage them uh, kung ano yung sitwasyon na kinakaharap nila. So I'm, go I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, example. Dito ki Daniel, uh, Daniel is a sealed book. Okay, for us, hindi natin babasahin sa Daniel 12, 4, uh, 5 through 9. As after uh, Daniel was told about yung, yung prophecy, yung nakita niya yung pangitain. And then he wrote kung ano yung nakita niya. Ganoon din si John. Ano? He wrote kung ano yung nakita niya. So what John saw, what Daniel saw is, is a picture of what's happening. Hindi lang sa sinabi sa kanya, isulat mo to, isulat mo to, this is what you have to write. Kundi nakita nila and then they wrote kung ano yung nakita nila. Unlike the revelation dito si Daniel, after na he wrote everything, ang sabi sa kanya, you seal the book. Okay? Bakit eh, he has to seal the book? Dahil mangyayari yung isinulat niya matagal na panahon pa. Far into the future. Okay? Pero dito sa revelation, at makita natin uh, yung mga nakitang nakita ni Daniel uh, matagal na panahon pa uh, mayroong yung mangyayari doon sa Babylon mayroong sa Medo Persia mayroon sa Babi sa Babylonia uh, ay may, mayroon sa uh, yung sa Greece uh, Macedonia at meron din sa Rome so do if you use yung point of reference noong lifetime ni Daniel, matagal na, matagal na panahon pa bago mangyari yung ibang mga nakita niya. Pero dito kay John, sa book of John, it is an unsealed book. Uh, he was told not to seal the book. Bakit? Bakit? Kasi nga, iyon ang, iyon ang, 
Iyon ang kahulugan. Iyon ang explanation doon sa nakita niya. That it is going to happen soon. Uh, soon, very soon na mangyayari kung ano yung isinulat niya. Yung sa lifetime o mga recipients. Okay. So now, let me check my time. Okay. Konti na lang. So dito sa... Ang number seven is that remember not to make your picture too small. Instead of titingnan mo lang yung bahagi ng bahay, you have to look at the entire house when you're studying the book of Revelation. Hindi lang yung... Kaya nga sa reading ninyo, I ask you to read all of them, uh, read the book in its entirety in, sa isang upuan lang. So next, uh, let's talk about yung... Again, it's, this is a step back. Uh, yung biblical hermeneutics. Yung hermeneutics is yung study, yung, yung sabi natin, science of interpretation. So yung word na hermeneutics is applicable, hindi lang sa Bible, kundi so, kung anong bagay man na uh, you're trying to interpret. Ano? Pero yung may biblical hermeneutics. Uh, dalawang ano, category, una yung general hermeneutics. Sa kabuuan ng Bible, mayroong mga principles na pwede natin i-apply. I'm not going to explain much dahil walang tayong time. So una is that you go with a simple meaning. So instead na titingnan mo yung isa o dalawang passage na difficult to explain or understand, patapos i-overshadow mo yung napakasimple. So hindi magandang practice yun sa hermeneutics. So you go for the simple meaning. Assume the writer used the right words and form. Uh, siya yung writer, siya yung nakakaalam kung ano yung isinulat niya and especially inspired siya ng Holy Spirit. Uh, number three, the meaning of the text is controlled by its internal and external context. So context, 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 yun ang sabi natin. Kung sa business, meron tayong tinatawag na location, location, location. In hermeneutics, sa pag-aaral ng Bible, it is very important that we look at the context, context, context. Kaya hindi maganda yung pag-aaral ng Bible na Uh, nag-cherry picking ka lang ng verses. I understand yung principle kung bakit sinasabi natin book, chapter, and verse. Pero you have to make sure na yung application, yung understanding, yung interpretation mo ng verse is uh, nakabase doon sa context. Hindi na naka-isolate. Hindi na stand alone. So, and you have to also to remember na yung mga verses na yon were assigned by men na nag-translate. They were not in the original. Walang verses, walang chapters, ni walang pangalan ng book. So kaya, so we have to be very careful with that. So it is better to, sa interpretation natin, na you really have to understand yung context. Uh, use clear passage to interpret, interpret an obscure passage. Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina. So, yung may mga passages na straightforward, very clear, uh, Huwag nating palabuin dahil may isa o dalawang uh, passages tayo na hindi naiintindihan. And then we'll take yung interpretation ng mas mahirap para explain yung interpretation ng mas madali. So hindi magandang practice din yan. Number five, recognize the genre of the document. Ano ba ito? Uh, katulad ng Book of Psalms, di ba? O letter, epistle. So may iba-ibang klase. Alimbawa, yung Romans, it's more on doctrine. Pero yung revelation, it's more on symbols. So, may iba-ibang uh, genre kung, pa, kung paano isinulat yung book. Interpret its text in the frame of its own philosophical preposition. So, we have to understand ano yung preposition, philosophical preposition ng text na yun. I'm not going to explain that in detail. Recognize the reality of the progressive revelation. Okay. It's unfolding, yung uh, tapos na, uh, kasalukuyan, o sa hinaharap. Okay. And by the way, yung meaning ng term na prophecy is not always into the future. Yung mga prophets in the Old Testament, um, minsan, karamihan ang sinasabi nila has nothing to do with the future. Uh, they talk about what's, what's important now and sometimes in the past. So itong next slide natin, handito yung, so just uh, para... Uh, nakita natin yung diagram ng tinatawag natin context. So halimbawa, yung target text mo, you have to understand yung target text mo o sentence o sabi natin verse. Again, I'm not using the term verse dahil 
yung verse natin minsan, uh, minsan statement lang, minsan isang sentence, minsan dalawang sentences, minsan hindi pa complete sentence. So you cannot understand a verse, just yung verse. You have to understand yung, yung, yung text mismo. And then uh, yung target text mo, understand it based doon sa paragraphing, uh, doon sa uh, pericope, sabi natin periscope. Doon sa, based doon sa entire book, yung, yung author's other writing, and then based on the testament, if it is part of the Old or the New Testament, uh, yung entire Bible. Ibig sabihin, consistent siya dapat sa message ng kabuoan ng Bible. Di ba? And then yung geographical uh, background or external context ito, historical background, cultural background. Okay. So pagdating dito sa Revelation, we are using yung tinatawag nating special hermeneutics. Ibig sabihin, uh, specific siya sa book of Revelation. So mayroon tayong literal versus figurative. Yung vision uh, and then yung explanation. May mga bagay dito na you know figurative sila dahil uh, an explanation is given. Diba? Uh, katulad nito, sa verse 12 ng chapter 1, I turned and see the voice that was speaking to me and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstand. So lampstand ang nakita niya, di ba? Pero pagdating mo sa sa verse 16, so ang sabi niya rito, ay sa 20, ang sabi niya, As the mystery of the seven stars, and this is Christ talking, which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstand, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstand are the seven churches. So my own explanation. So you don't have, so you know it's symbol, it, they are symbols, and you don't have to look for explanation uh, dahil the explanation is given. Kung ano yung uh, seven lampstand at kung ano yung uh, seven stars. Also, special hermeneutics. Ano yung original intent nitong writer? Bakit siya nagsulat? Now, there's a persecution and they're writing them to be faithful in the midst of persecution. Diba? Iyon lang yung intention niya. Ang, iyon ang main ang intention niya. Uh, yung halimbawa, yung original audience. Again, so we talk about yung kung sino yung recipient kanina. So we have to take that into consideration. Every time you're going to interpret or try to understand kung ano yung sinasabi, It has to make sense doon sa original audience. Hindi lang sa atin ngayon. Otherwise, yung recipient, yung original audience, they receive a letter that has nothing to do with them. In the midst of persecution, they were giving a letter that has nothing to do with them. I don't think that is the case. And also yung time frame. We have to understand that. Yung Old Testament background, historical background, and then yung modern application. So, special hermeneutics in the case of Itong, ano, itong revelation. Uh, itong slide na internal content. Ano, internal context. context. Uh, so pag, if you're studying internal context, uh, mayroon siyang, yung buong book ng revelation, mayroon siyang prologue, mayroon siyang epilogue sa dulo, introduction sa conclusion. Uh, you have to understand yung sentences, yung paragraph, yung uh, hati uh, ng book. Again, sabi natin kanina, Itong chapters natin is they were assigned by scholars supposedly to help us uh, as a tool uh, para mas madali natin maintindihan yung book. Pero minsan, it creates yung uh, uh, confusion. Especially if kung naitali mo yung sarili mo doon sa, doon sa chapter lang na yun o doon sa verse lang na yun. Okay. Pero dito sa, ano natin, sa diagram natin, you can see na yung sa chapter 1 talks about the son of Son of Man vision, sa 2 and 3, yung 7 churches, sa 4 and 5, heaven's throne, sa 6 and 7, yung 7 seals of scrolls, sa 8 through 11, 7 trumpets of warning, 16, bowl of wrath, and then 21 to 22, yung New Jerusalem, and then you have yung epilogue. Ano? Uh, internal context, uh, authors, uh, ito yung comparison. If John is the writer, uh, si uh, Apostle John ang writer, you could compare yung revelations sa ibang writings niya. 
At may mga words na ginamit siya rito na ginamit niya rin doon sa ibang writings niya. So at least, in trying to understand kung ano yung sinasabi niya, yung by studying yung other writings niya would help kung ano yung meaning noong mga words na, na ginamit niya. And also, yung Old Testament, remote context, uh, Old Testament, Uh, dito may mga example tayo rito na kung paano yung uh, sabi nga natin kanina yung mga words, phrases na ginamit dito sa Revelation ginamit na rin sa Old Testament. And it will do us uh, good if we understand it halimbawa in the context of uh, Daniel and Ezekiel kung paano ginamit doon yung mga anong iyon yung, yung, uh, yung symbols na iyon then we'll have a better understanding, better way to understand itong book of Revelation. Okay? A various interpretation ng Revelation. Merong four major ways of interpreting Revelation. Ibig sabihin, yung lenses, uh, yung glasses, ano natin, na people are using to interpret yung book of Revelation. Merong apat. So, ang una, yung futurist. Ang ibig sabihin ng futurist is that uh, all, lahat ng sinulat dito sa Revelation are going to be at the end. Hindi pa nangyayari ngayon, kaya ang sabi nga, end times. And uh, ang, the way na they look at this is they, yung mga symbols dito, uh, ang interpretation nila is literal na mangyayari. Mayroon talagang dragon, mayroon talagang lamb, mayroon talagang 1,000 years reign. So lahat literal. Ano? So yun yung mga futurist. Uh, lahat mangyayari, hindi pa nangyayari o nangyayari pa lang, we're in the process. Uh, pero more towards the future from the time of writing at uh, hindi symbols kundi literal. Yung mga words na, yung mga description na ginamit. And then you have yung preterist. Yung preterist, ang... Um, yung they're looking at revelation ang ginagamit nilang glasses or lenses is that itong sinulat ni John uh, from our point of view hindi sa point of view na nung ano nakatanggap from our point of view nangyari na from their point of view mangyayari pero in the near future soon so kaya sa atin nangyari na to okay historical naman continuous sequential historical fulfillment na uh, parang sequence siya So, not necessarily sa past lang o sa future, kundi parang continuous siya, ang nag unfold siya pa unti-unti. Idealist, pero ito historical, most of doon sa sinabi sa Book of Revelation is still in a distant future. Pero yun nga lang, parang hist- uh, itong history, uh, it, it goes back, by the way, it goes back from the very beginning, from the creation. Itong historical na ito, sorry. They go back all, mula doon sa, doon sa, ano, sa uh, beginning of men, uh, beginning of uh, creation hanggang sa ngayon. So later on, mayroon tayong pag-uusapan yung dispensationalism. And this is yung lens na ginagamit ng mga dispensationalist. Okay? Uh, and then you have yung idealist. Yung idealist, uh, they look at the book. Uh, it's about concept, themes. Uh, truths, it's not necessarily symbols, it's not necessarily literal, pero ano yung mga concepts, ano yung mga themes. And uh, bihira, bihira yung grupo na would take this uh, lens in interpreting the, uh, the book of Revelation. Ang karamihan, itong historical, preterist, karamihan historical eh. But then you have yung futurist saka yung uh, preterist. Okay. Itong historical, uh, many of them are Uh, duo, dalawa. Uh, historical sila and then futurist at the same time. So, hindi pure lang. Ano. And then there are three schools of interpretation when it comes to the study. Ito is study of the book of Revelation. Um, yung premillennial, uh, Christ will return before a literal 1,000 year reign. So, itong millennial dito is yung 1,000. Ano yung 1,000 years? So, mayroon na sabi, pre- in reference to return of Christ. So si Christ daw uh, babalik before yung literal na 1,000 years. Itong post-millennial is uh, Christ will return after 
the literal 1,000 years. So they all, both of them believes doon sa literal na 1,000 years. Yung isa lang, yung Christ returns before, yung isa, Christ will return after. And then you have yung abelineal. A, which means against, contra, there is no literal 1,000 year reign. So yung 1,000 years uh, represent yung completeness ng reign ni Christ. So it's not a literal 1,000 years. Pag tinignan mo rito sa next slide natin, mayroon dito ng uh, uh, chart. Yung school of interpretation, yung tatlo. So you have yung premillennial. Uh, may iba-ibang klase ng premillennialism. Mayroon yung tinatawag natin na pre-tribunal o yung dispensationalism. Mayroon yung mid, mayroon yung post-tribunal. Uh, tribe and tribunal tribulational tribulation ay bibigyan and then you have yung post uh, uh, millennialism meron dalawang at least dalawang group ng post millennialism and then mayroong pagkakaiba rin sa interpretation and then you have yung amillennialism hindi literal yung 1000 year reign parang ganoon uh, karamihan ng uh, churches of christ ito yung position a millennial Hindi literal yung 1,000 years. Pero you'll be surprised, si Alexander Campbell, pag tinignan mo yung listahan ng post-millennialism, uh, uh, sabi nila, ito yung belief niya, yung post-millennialism. Okay. So, pero karamihan ng mga churches of Christ, ang paniniwala is itong amillennialism. Hindi literal yung 1,000 years. And I will explain, or hopefully in your study, uh, uh, it will be explained kung bakit. Ano? Mahaba itong study ng Revelation. Okay, so itong uh, amillennialism, amil mayroong tinatawag tayong spiritual, two minutes na lang ah. And then mayroong tayong continuous historical, and then mayroong tayong preterist. May, may preterist na against Jerusalem, ibig sabihin yung persecution was during the time of Jerusalem. And then mayroong yung against Rome, persecution by the Roman Empire. Uh, preterist. Uh, karamihan sa mga Ano rin natin, uh, kung mayroong kategory pipili ka rito, is amillennial preterist Rome. Yun ang karamihan sa... Uh, all, yung iba, uh, hindi nila alam yung term kung ano yung... O kaya hindi nila sinasabi kung ano yung uh, way na uh, yung paniniwala nila. Pero they would fall under this category. They're amillennial against doon sa hindi literal yung 1,000 year reign. Uh, preterist, ibig sabihin nangyari na in the past. And then, ang tinutukoy ni John dito persecution is yung Roman persecution. Okay. And ito, chart lang about dispensationalism. Uh, dispensationalism, uh, itong dispensationalist, they divide yung history, kaya historical sila. Uh, yung, uh, yung sa seven dispensation. So, may, mayroon silang age of innocence, conscience, human government, promise, promise law, church, saka yung kingdom. Magkaiba yung church saka sa kingdom. Okay. So, right now, we're on the church age. And then, parating pa lang yung kingdom age. May chart dito sa next slide. Kaya pag tininan mo rito, yung... Uh, sabi natin dito, innocence, creation to the fall, conscience, uh, the fall to the flood... Human government, flood to Abraham, promise Abraham to Moses, law, Moses to the cross, church, cross to Armageddon. Ito itong malaking, uh, ano, malaking uh, war between good and evil, sa nila. And then you have yung kingdom from Armageddon to the millennial kingdom. Okay? And then you have yung millennium na. So again, my chart dito, uh, they divided yung history ng mundo into seven dispensation. Kaya dispensational uh, lesson ang tawag sa kanila. Diba? Okay. So, yung mga dispensationalist din, ang interpretation nila ng seven churches hindi literal. Uh, yes, kahit sabihin nilang, yes, mayroong churches sa uh, Asia Minor na ang panga, uh, na dito sa mga location na ito, pero sa Book of Revelation, hindi siya literal. So, ang sabi nila, at inasign na, dahil historical sila, ina nag-inassign na nila ng time. So halimbawa, yung Ephesus, yun ang unang nabanggit, ang focus yung love and legalism uh, between 33 AD after the cross uh, to 100 AD. So mga time iyan eh. 
Ismirna, persecution, 180 to 312. So, sunod-sunod yan. Ang sabi nila, right now, nandito tayo sa time ng Laodicea. So, nasa last age na tayo ng church age. Kaya, pag napakinggan mo sila, ito mga premillennialist na dispensationalist, historical, ang kaya puro end of time, malapit na, malapit na ang paghukom. Ito na yung sign talagang ngayon na darating, di ba? Dahil Laodicea eh. Nasa Laodicea na tayo. Pero, they could extend that Laodicea for a long time hanggang dumating si Christ. And it's very inconsistent dahil again, sinasabi nila na ang book of Revelation is literal, pero pagdating sa seven churches, gusto nila figurative. So, inconsistent yung interpretation na yun. Anyway, yung seven churches, pag tinignan mo rito, uh, sa baba nitong next slide na may diagram na uh, nakita mo rito, opening and closing ng mga events. Uh, kanina, binigay ko yung dates. Ngayon, bakit yung mga dates na yon? Kasi ito yung sinasabi nila. Yung una, apostolic ministry, yung Ephesus daw, uh, close of the apostolic age, conversion of Constantine, uh, first claim by Bishop of Rome, uh, apostasy talaga sa kanila yung, yung Catholic, di ba? Uh, Protestant Reformation, yung Great Awakening, Rise of Theology, Liberalism. Yung, and then, ang eighth, yung Rapture. Uh, still in the future, uh, pero so ngayon, nasan doon tayo sa rise ng, uh, dito tayo sa uh, last part ng ecumenical movement. Kaya yung sinasabi ng mga denomination na lahat magka, magkakasama lang tayo, we're all one, uh, hindi lang sila basta minsan nakikigaya-gaya tayo, uh, pero hindi lang siya basta yung pinaniniwalaan nila dahil they believe in love or they believe in unity. It is rooted deep in their theology. Kung alam nila, yung iba uh, sa denomination, yun, parang oh, uh, love tayo. Pero no, uh, especially doon sa mga leaders nila, sa mga scholars nila, they believe na it's an age dito da sa dispensation na ito. Part yun, yung ecumenical uh, movement na yun is part ng dispensation noong church age. Okay, amillennialism. Uh, pakibasa na lang yan. Yan yung definition ng amillennialism. Meron tayong church, uh, chart uh, kung ano yung sa amillennialism. Ibig sabihin, yung church age is also the kingdom age. Ang ibig sabihin ng 1,000 year is yung reign, perfect reign of Christ. Uh, kasi yung, yung, uh, yung meaning ng, word, ng numbers. Ano? So 1,000 years would equivalent to complete, complete Uh, completely, complete reign of Christ. And then, walang rapture, walang uh, Armageddon, walang uh, one, literal na 1,000 years when Christ returned, yung second coming, uh, it's going to be judgment. Okay. So, a millennial uh, preterist, itong sabi natin dito, believes the event predicted all happened shortly after the book was written. Okay, assume that from the perspective of original readers, the events must soon happen. Soon probably means within the lifetime of the original recipient. Meron tayong chart after that. Pakitingnan nyo na lang. Uh, literally structure, uh, ito magandang pag-aralan ito. Especially pag pag uh, Next time siguro, kung may next time. Dito ako mag-uumpisa sa literary structure. Dahil ito is an overview of the entire book. And many scholars uh, look at the book of Revelation in a chiastic structure. It's a style of writing na malimit gamitin ni John. Kahit doon sa book of John, uh, sa 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, a chiastic writing where it is assume yung position ng, uh, ng K, ng chai, uh, which is a letter, letter X uh, Greek alphabet. At uh, yung first half noon, yun yung yun yung style ng writing. Kaya basahin niyo yung chiastic structure. We'll talk about that in detail later on. Dahil it will give us a better understanding kung paano, ano yung style ng writing ni John when he wrote the book of Revelation. Because the entire book, you could pretty much uh, put it in a chiastic format. Meaning, ang crescendo niya, ang peak niya, nasa gitna. At pag tinignan mo yung uh, gitna, Nandito na tayo sa 58, slide 58. 
Pag tininan mo yung pinaka gitna ng book of Revelation, yung pinaka main message niya will be found doon sa chapter 12 saka sa chapter 14. At doon sa chapter 12 saka sa chapter 14, it talks about yung yung the lamb, the lamb of God. Diba? So yun yung pinaka gitna niya. When it talks about the lamb of God, answers to the evil. Yes, for a little while parang yeah, the, yung evil is triumphant pero in the end it's the lamb of God. It's the rider on a, on a white horse na na nag uh, victorious. Okay. So it really talks about the reign of Christ. Okay. So let's uh, wrap it up. Yung seven principles na binanggit natin kanina. Remember the key verses. Remember who it was written to. Remember their situation. Remember that it is a picture book. Remember it is an Old Testament book. Remember it is a futuristic book. And remember not to make your picture too small. Don't limit it to a verse. Don't limit it to a symbol. Look at it from yung the entire book and then the entire Bible. Ano yung message? Uh, Revelation is a picture book. It is an imminent book. It's rooted in, it's a biblical book. Okay, So picture book, symbols, imminent, soon, biblical book, it's rooted in the Old Testament. Ano applications atin? And this is where I want to end. So if it is, uh, sabi natin kanina, if it is something that happened in the past, uh, nangyari na, uh, except siguro yung dulo, yung, yung chapter, yung, uh, sa 2122. So marami sa mga uh, kapatiran natin uh, believe na iyong chapter 2122 uh, it will happen in the future. Pero the rest ang uh, nangyari na. So ano ang pwede nating ano ang lesson na pwede nating makuha? So mayroon pa bang lesson para sa atin? Meron. And here are seven of them. One, Jesus knows all about his church. He knows his strength and its weaknesses. Two, Jesus is deeply concerned for the spiritual well-being of his church. He warns the church of faith crisis and to be prepared for trials and challenges. Three, the churches needs to look deeply into their faith to determine whether that faith is focused in the right place, which is Jesus Christ, rather than in church organization or some form of extreme doctrinal orthodoxy. Four, The churches should beware of compromise with their pagan and worldly secular neighbors. Five, that often churches, unaware of faith and identity drift, conform more to their social environment than is healthy. Diba? So, iyon yung uh, mali yata ang numbering ko. Ah. Yeah, application. Five. Five of them. Okay. Yung letters sa seven churches. Okay. So, ang main message natin, it's a spoiler alert sa study ninyo sa Revelation. Ibig sabihin, I'm disclosing kung ano ang ang uh, ang katapusan. Diba? Ang end. Uh, parang pag nagbabasa ako dati ng pocketbook, yung mga kabataan, hindi niyo alam siguro kung ano ang pocketbook. Pero, kung, what would determine kung babasahin ko yung pocketbook is I used to read yung back cover. Pag nagustuhan ko yung ending, then I'm going to read the entire book. So, yun yung sabag natin spoiler alert. Na, and I'm revealing kung ano yung ending nitong book. It's a difficult book to read, uh, pero ito ang pinaka main message na God's people win. And Satan and his uh, earthly minions, including nations with armies, are no match for God of heaven. So, yes, read the book of Revelation, study it, Uh, sometimes may hirapan tayo intindihin lahat, uh, matagal na pag-aralan, pero uh, keep it in mind na ang kabuang message niya is that God reigns, He rules, and God's people win. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Brother Jun, sa, sa, pinak, sa, ano, no, sa paumpisa no, ng pag-aaral ng Book of Revelation. Uh, invite po namin kayo kung pwede po kayo ulit sa Sunday. <laughs> ah, sa Sunday, magta-travel ako eh. So, ah, Lord willing, nasa aeroplano ako. Ah, sige po, sige po. 